in that little cat lover, that thing right now. He's doing the arm. She is cocky. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> We're going to flip this house upside down. They're in for a rude awakening, oh, which is the line good. you forgot. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Her little power is going to mm. wear off very, very soon. <laughs> and when it wears off, I'm coming for that bitch. <laughs> and then she like whipped the bed with a towel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself. That was such a good speech, though. And the music over the them top all. of it. And it was so, like, it was just what we're thinking. It's so good when a person inside the house sums up how you feel outside yeah. the house. And it's so rare that it is captured that brilliantly. And everyone was... is covering their feelings in this game. Yeah. Because they're all in the game. But Ica mm. is someone which actually lets it out, how she's properly yeah. feeling. And I like the way she said cat lover and she sounded so disgusted that she was a cat lover. <laughs> it was like she was a paedophile. It was just like... It was just, <laughs> it, she was just horrified. It was brilliant. But what's funny is like... <laughs> She has seemed close to Neda. I know. So was that like great gameplay? Because she clearly doesn't like her. I think they were friendly at first, but I think it's just like us. We like Neda at first, but Neda's just, yeah. she's not got hoh itis. She's got safe till jury itis, which is Even seven worse. weeks longer. <laughs> And it's going to annoy you. You're going to rub people the wrong way. If you're evicting everyone and people can't even come after you, it's not fair. It's not an even playing field, so people are going to be annoyed. And she does act like she's the only one that knows how to play the game. Yeah. And she makes Ica feel like a twat for everything she's yeah. done, which is not by her rule book. She treats everyone like they're her little minions, and they're not. And what I thought at this point was, you should have kept Cassandra. If Ica, Ica and Gary had yeah. kept Cassandra, they'd have her on their side. They could form an army against Nedda. But they did Nedda's mm. dirty work for her by not keeping her. Oh. Annoying. Wish we could reverse that. <laughs> that business. Um, then, then, <laughs> then I could to meet you in bed. <laughs> you look like you've got something yeah. more to say no, on this. So, no, it's the same I've only really written different. the one line. Go on. It's that we hate our alliance. Yeah. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, isn't it? I love it. Hate I hate that alliance hate, now too. Hating your own alliance is brilliant. Um, that alliance though, they've got such a grip on this house. Do you think we've got any chance of... You know, Ica needs to rally. If Ica can save Gary, she's Demetrius is a strong player. They'd have William. Dre would be gone theoretically. All yeah. they need is like say one or two others, and there'd be a Karen. They've got Karen. I know she can't win fuck all, but Karen likes she's Gary. A number, at least. Yeah, exactly. They've got annoying. enough. They've got enough, but they're yeah. not. They can't get their shit together. That's the problem. It's kind of hanging on Dimitri this week, isn't mm, it? Very much. And so. Gary is a strong player, isn't it? You would want him on your side. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but Ica said in the diary room she was torn between the numbers and the people she actually likes. Yeah, Ica's got to sort a fucking game out now. You can't work with people you don't like long term because you're just never going to trust each other. Exactly. And... You're doing devil horns at someone in your life <laughs> <laughs> in the store room before you know it. And, and Neda doesn't trust Ica either. She's just waiting for a chance to get her out. And Kevin wants to get Ica out yeah, as well. Yeah, so Ica now might as well cut a loss exactly. with, with the six. and Just then draw go the to... line. Draw the line in the sand. Well, the lines are being drawn left, mm. right and centre, aren't they? All Kevin and Bruno do is just kiss Nedda's ass 24-7, don't they? It's... Kevin and Bruno have got no game of their own whatsoever. No, they're just hiding behind Nedda's bloody skirt tails, whatever it's called. Coat tails. <laughs> <laughs> Black and Saint hoodie tails. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then Nedda was worrying that Ica's going to tell everyone everything. Everyone knows everything anyway. Yeah, because if she's anyway. backed into a corner, she'll tell everyone. Everyone knows anyway. And then Neda said she wanted to pretend to still like Ica. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Um, so, so the next thing was Gary said he had dark energy around him. <laughs> I love Gary. But he's not going out that easy. Um, and then he was getting sexy with an S on Kevin. Oh, uh, yeah. But on I, the bed. But I thought, had Gary worked out that Kevin voted for him? Because you could theoretically work it out from the numbers, but they never showed... That's true, they never showed the con- confrontation yeah. about that. They just showed them cuddling on the bed and Gary's going, I'm scared. It was very yeah. intimate, that scene, didn't you think? Yeah, because it was like the hair touching. Yeah, the grooming. And like, it's like, he had his hands on like, yeah. his Yeah, Kevin chest. was like actually grooming Gary like he's a monkey. Do you oh, know what I mean? Sort of psychologist that's, that's yeah. what say about that, yeah, I am like Dr. Pam Spur right <laughs> But he was, he was like playing with his hair like. And he said he hasn't got a friend like Gary in his life. No, I'm not surprised because it's so backstabbing on his friend who has got a friend like Gary yeah, in their true. life though which yeah. I did <laughs> and then Gary was going oh but what will I do the next week and the next week and Kevin was like step one win the veto and then Gary yeah. said I got rid of Cassandra to help you Gary you should have kept Cassandra <sighs> did he was that the reason that he Gary tried? didn't I get rid of Cassandra was. I didn't think that either but I've got like I want to discuss Kevin's gameplay here because mm-hmm. I feel like he just 
pulls at people's emotional yeah he does he? like at all the gay men the, in the house yeah, gay, gay guys. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't think... I don't like it. I think it's been a very devious game. He's coming after your people. (laughs) (laughs) Get off my people. (laughs) But I think maybe he is one of my people. Oh, Kevin. Yeah, Yeah. when he was saying... What he was saying about his relationship with Gary in the diary room, he was like, we have a great vibe. We have a... We have a great... We have a great energy. Mm. What about the dark energy, though? It's... (laughs) He said it's tough to put a number on it or quantify it. Why is he saying that? Is oh, he having doubts he's probably about his talking sexuality? about his sexuality spectrum, isn't I think he? He is. You know about these bisexuals, though, Gaz. Remember what Christopher Biggins said? Oh yeah, <laughs> scourge of the modern world. <laughs> Obviously, we don't agree because with that. AIDS is a bisexual disease. <laughs> Not our views. <laughs> no, go see Christopher Biggins if you've got an issue with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so then, what else? Oh God, where am I? I've put. Seems like Kevin doesn't want Gary out. Only stupid Nedda does. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my own notes there. Um, and then, uh, uh, Dimitri and Ika were under the covers while Gary was trying to sleep. Yeah. That was very BBUK, wasn't it? It reminded me <laughs> of Kamal chucking, <laughs> chucking a glass of water. At least over, somebody got wet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> over Maxwell and Saskia. It was quite like that. And Gary did seem to throw a pillow at Ika with some yeah. force. <laughs> but did you notice Gary was sharing a bed with Bruno? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that was interesting. And then decided to drag Bruno out of bed to talk yeah. alone in the middle mm-hmm. of the night mm-hmm. now actually we don't know what time that was because Big Brother Canada never tell us but I would like to have known what time that was mm. that Gary thought it was reasonable to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pull Bruno out of bed yeah, to, okay. to talk about his alliance <laughs> and Gary goes does this group want me or Dre out and Bruno's like what group <laughs> pull the group other one you Bruno think? you fucking dick <laughs> uh, like you know the group Ned as bitches that's what I call them mm-hmm. um, and then Bruno's like oh I'd love to help you stay here yeah whatever I've written Bruno equals shit game player <laughs> <laughs> I know but on this other podcast I listened to they were always like oh Bruno's such a good game player he's a bunch of crap he's not who's, who's saying that about him Jordan Parr oh. Cindy's ex-boyfriend <laughs> uh, <laughs> so then it was the veto guys I don't like it backwards week I don't like Why? things being all in the wrong order because I realise one of my favourite things about BBUS and BB Canada is the structure. <laughs> Formulaic nature. Yeah, the structure. You know what's coming next. You know what's secure. coming. You know when, yo, it's the veto tonight. It's nominations. It's HOH. Well, how do you think they fucking feel then on the I inside? I know, because they didn't even tell them what was coming up, did they? No. But I didn't like, I felt uh, cast asunder by it. I didn't like it at all. Also, um, Arissa, when she called them, she was still wearing that dress that we like with the fe- feathers on it. I that as well. She'd been stuck in that, that studio. Like... Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Don't rewrite history. <laughs> <laughs> it's backwards week. Um, there is a... <laughs> she was still in that studio with that with those people. Know, She'd been weird. kept in there for days on end. <laughs> Lock the doors. <laughs> situation. It's like the Jonestown massacre. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's where we make them drink all the Kool Aid. Um... <laughs> have to Google this <laughs> one po- later. With poison in. Come on, guys. Is it real? Yeah. Ouch. It's like a cult. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll go, I'll, we can do the conspiracy podcast later. Right. So. <laughs> Premium. Ve- now, we never saw the veto pick, but they said go online. So <laughs> They did, yeah. It was like that electric shop card that was only on the app. <laughs> I thought, who's going to go online and watch that? I suppose it's just to say it wasn't a fix, right? That's <laughs> yeah, Probably, but Gary listed them out in the diary room really helpfully. So, If they'd not spent all that time showing people clumping down the stairs for the second time. You could have seen that pick. To be fair, you could have edited that pick together within probably five seconds. Yeah, exactly. Because there's only five names to say. Mm-hmm. So... Um, Gary said he wanted to visualise the power of veto being his. Little did he know it was a spelling competition. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I want to talk about the whole <laughs> theme of this POV Go first. On, which was called Highway to Spell. Was it? <laughs> Why the fuck, when they're in space on the Odyssey, <laughs> did it have like a 1930s mobsters theme? <laughs> Bruno was dressed as like a British policeman with a cape on <laughs> from the past. I thought it was complete nonsense. Did you think that? Good point. Did not think that, but you're right. <laughs> However... Yeah, like... they didn't even go into space until, like, the 60s. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, but then I suppose the bulk is a prehistoric thing. Mm. But, like, they'd spent a lot of money on that, mm. that task. Like, those cars and stuff. Mm. They've made all of that for that task. Like, yeah. you can't buy it, buy that thing. Yeah. It's a lot of effort. That thing. <laughs> that car thing with a road and, like, letters at one end and, like, a platform at the other. <laughs> I know, it's just spelling. They could just have them, like, write it on a piece of 
piece of paper. Yeah, or get it out of a cr- crater or something. <laughs> it wasn't even like... sponsored by anyone, was it? No, well, it looked like it was sponsored by Rolls Royce, but. Come on, Big Brother Canada, we want product placement with all of our competition. <laughs> <laughs> They had very tight waistcoats on, I noticed. Those costumes, whatever they make them wear mm, in a task, mm. they're always a little bit like se- sexy, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're always a, bit little, tight, a little bit too tight. A lot of thigh on yeah. show. <laughs> whatever, remember that, if you ever go and see a brother, tell them you're a size up from what you are, because I think they always give you a size down. That's a point. Yeah. When I was applying for Big Brother, I had mm-hmm. to write down all of my measurements for Did my you? head, my <laughs> arms, my... <laughs> yeah, the circumference of your head. Oh, wow. Your legs, your mm-hmm. shoe size. I That's think... when they make you wear a crown just before they kick you out the next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they do all of that before they've even decided... Wow. If you're anywhere near what they want you to put in, no, never tell them the in. truth. Don't tell them the truth. <laughs> they can't handle the truth. Um, so the spe- there was a bit of a twist on this from the normal spelling competitions. Okay, was there? Yeah, what was it? Because no- normal, well, no- oh, like, they set the n- number of letters. Yeah, per and round. you had yeah. So you your strategy was to save your longest word till last. Oh yeah, and you it? had a limited number of consonants and vowels that you yeah. could use throughout the task. So you had to you, just throw away your shit letters first, basically. Yeah. Which is that was an added element of strategy tricky. to it, wasn't it? More tricky. Now, do you remember Gaz on BB, BBUS when someone spelled out the word technotronics? <laughs> no, but you're not a true fan, are you? I thought that was that <laughs> something to do with that task with the TV <laughs> thing with Luke S. <laughs> What was that what? called again? <laughs> Barbell Media, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Someone once spelt out Technotronics and it was disallowed on BBUS. What what is te- isn't that word? a brand name? Yeah, it's like a song, isn't it? This beat is Technotronics. That's some shit electronic brand. <laughs> no, that's Technic. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice what the first three letter word was that a lot of people had spelled? Pot. Pot. Which. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Bruno said there's a lot of fans of pot in this house. Yeah, now <laughs> this brings me on to a news story that I saw a oh, couple of weeks ago. Oh, and I keep forgetting to bring brace it up. Brace yourselves, guys. Um, Culture. <laughs> <laughs> now, I read that Canada is poised to legalise marijuana. Yes. But we all have, like, a very well-known housemate in our lives <laughs> who makes a living in, like, a pot cafe, mm. doesn't she? Sarah Hannan. Yeah. Mm. So how is that possible if it's not legal in Canada yet? Tell me that. She's just a a plain old drug dealer. (laughs) (laughs) She didn't mind it going in a VT. (laughs) That's a good point. I don't understand that. I don't understand. I know they do have cannabis cafes in Canada, so... Hmm. Maybe there's some parts of Canada. Because Ginger Ninja works in one as well, apparently. Oh, does he? So I heard. (laughs) (laughs) I know too much. They're all at it. Life after Big Brother. (laughs) Then it started snowing. It was quite a good task, actually, all the snowing in space, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was going to say about that, that snow, yeah. like, I've experienced that snow before because I went to Hong Kong Disneyland at Christmas uh, and uh, it don't snow in Hong Kong, but they make it snow. Did they? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I know. Oh, CGI. They played like, let it snow, let it snow, <laughs> let it snow. And then oh. this foam started coming out. Wow. Because they sprayed it from on top of the buildings. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not cold because it's foam. Oh. Nedda was moaning her cobs off. Mm. Saying that, <laughs> saying that cold was her kryptonite. Wow. Well, we know what Spencer Pratt's kryptonite is, don't we? <laughs> BBUK. <laughs> Remember that though. Remember that cold is her kryptonite. Maybe we can get her down the line yeah, somehow with lock it. Her in a freezer. Big brother, make a note, Ted. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of Ted, we actually got a question this week. Someone asked me, Laurie, who's yeah. the only person who emails me yeah. about our podcast, Hi, Laurie. said, "Where did Ted originate from?" I feel like you know about Ted. Is um, Ted a real person? My impression has always been, through your podcast, yeah. that Ted yeah. is a genuine producer yeah. of Big Brother USA. Yeah, that was it. Because I've forgotten. Actually, you should really ask this question to James's podcast, because he <laughs> actually invented it. But still. It's, it's all... a bit like Dr. Gareth from yeah. BB it's UK, like Do- who the... is a fabled character, a fabled person who yeah. we know works on the show. And we know him by name, because we hear him mentioned in the show, right? And on BB US, they have Dr. Ottoman, who that's their doctor. Ted is just like, he's basically like just the producer who tells you what to do, and he gives you the cue cards to read and like what Ted wants he's basically your Erin yeah it's like when it when it's a fix Ted does it so Ted's not really (laughs) he might be a real person or he might not but he's just he's moving things around to make it how he wants to be although he's not doing a very good job this year come on Ted you don't hear of many people called Ted though he must be an old an old boy (laughs) (laughs) wasn't he I've forgotten the origin for Ted but anyway that's yeah it's funny that you're asking me about your own 
podcast I know, references. I know, because <laughs> I thought that you knew 